Hi children, hope everyone is fine. Do you know what is fire? How did we discover it? How do we control it? Fire is both useful and dangerous. Why do we think so? Do you know it? Let's learn it today. The name of this lesson is Fire, Friend and Foe. Foe means enemy. Early man didn't know what fire was, but he must have seen the damage it would cause. He must have watched lightning and volcanoes long before he began to use fire himself. Fire was powerful and dangerous, and he was frightened. Fire may have puzzled early men, but we now know that fire is the result of a chemical reaction. When the oxygen in the air combines with carbon and hydrogen in a fuel, a chemical reaction takes place. Energy in the form of heat and light is released in this process. This is what we call fire. Children, early man didn't know what fire was. He must have found fire to be dangerous and frightening. Why they were afraid of fire? The early man might have seen volcanoes or lightning before he started using fire and was hence knew it was dangerous and powerful. So he was scared of fire. Fire must have been mystery for an early man, but it is known today that it is a result of chemical reaction. When oxygen present in air combines with carbon and hydrogen present in a fuel, energy is released in form of heat and light. And this is what fire is. Is that clear? See the next paragraph. Three things are needed to make fire. Fuel, oxygen and heat, wood, coal, cooking gas and petrol are some examples of fuel. Oxygen comes from the air. That is why when you blow on smoldering paper, smoldering that means burning slowly without flame, it often bursts into flame. The third thing needed to make fire is heat. Fuel and oxygen do not make fire by themselves or else a newspaper or a stick lying in the open would catch fire on its own. To burn a piece of paper or wood, we heat it before it catches fire. We generally do it with a lighted match. Every fuel has a particular temperature at which it begins to burn. This temperature is called the flash point or kindling temperature of the fuel. See children, to make fire, fuel, heat and oxygen as needed. Wood, coal, gas are fuel. Oxygen is available in air. That is why when you blow on smoldering paper, it often bursts into flame. But to cause fire, heat is essential. A piece of paper doesn't catch fire until that is supplied to it. Every fuel burns at a particular temperature, which is also called flash point or kindling temperature. What is flash point or kindling temperature? Every fuel burns at a particular temperature. That is called flash point or kindling temperature. Okay, see the next paragraph. It is sometimes said that fire is a good servant but a bad master. It only means that fire is very useful as long as it is kept under control. For instance, we use it to cook our food, warm our homes in winter and to generate electricity. But on the other hand, if fire gets out of control, it can be very dangerous. Each year, Thousands of homes and shops are damaged by fire. Vast areas of forest are also destroyed and hundreds of people are killed or injured. See, fire is a good servant but a bad master. Fire is a friend and a dangerous enemy. Fire is a boon if it is kept under control. 
but can be dangerous if it goes out of it. For instance, it is used in our house daily for cooking food, burning candles and so on. But if it goes out of control, it can cause damage to life, houses and even forests. Each year, thousands of homes and shops are damaged by fire. Vast areas of forest are also destroyed and hundreds of people are killed or injured. Let's move on to the next paragraphs. Just as three things are needed to start a fire, there are three main ways in which a fire can be put out. In each, one of the three things needed for burning is taken away. For example, we can take away the fuel. If the fire has no fuel to feed on, no burning can take place. We often let a fire die out simply by not adding more fuel to it. See, fire can be controlled by taking away any three of the things required for burning it. It can be stopped immediately by taking away the fuel. If the fire has no fuel, what will happen? If the fire has no fuel, to feed on, no burning can take place. So, stop the supply of the fuel to control the fire. What is the next way? The second way of putting out a fire is to prevent oxygen from reaching it. No supply of oxygen means no fire. Small fires can be put out or smothered. Smothered means suffocated from the lack of air. With a damp blanket or a sack, this stops oxygen reaching the burning material. Sometimes carbon dioxide is used to extinguish fire because it doesn't allow oxygen to reach the burning material. See, the second way of putting out a fire is to prevent oxygen from reaching it. No supply of oxygen means no fire. So, it can also be controlled by cutting the oxygen supply. For this, many a times blankets or a sack are thrown over burning objects. Then sometimes carbon dioxide is used to extinguish fire because it doesn't allow oxygen to reach the burning material. See the next one. The third way of putting out a fire is to remove the heat. If the temperature can be brought down below the flash point, the fuel stops burning. You blow on a burning matchstick or a candle to put it out. In doing so, you remove the hot air around the flame, bringing down its temperature below the flash point and the candle goes out. Sometimes water is sprayed on a fire. It absorbs heat from the burning fuel and lowers the temperature. The blanket of water also cuts off the supply of oxygen and the fire is extinguished. Some fires cannot be put out with water. If water is sprayed onto an oil fire, the oil will float to the top of the water and continue to burn. This can be very dangerous because Water can flow quickly, carrying the burning oil with it and spreading the fire. Water should also not be used on fires caused by electrical appliances. The person spraying water might receive an electric shock and be killed. A carbon dioxide extinguisher is the best thing to fight an electrical fire. See children. Another way is to remove the heat. You know, a burning candle goes out when you blow on it because when we blow air, we remove the hot air around the flame, bringing down its temperature below the flash point. It absorbs the heat from the burning fuel and lowers the temperature. When water is spread on fire, it absorbs heat from the burning material and lowers the temperature. But spraying water is not a good way of putting out an oil fire or an electric fire. Why? This is because if water is sprayed on an oil fire, oil will come on the top, top layer of water and will still burn. 
as water flows quickly it can take oil with it and thus increase the area where the fire can spread if water is sprayed on electric fire the person might get an electric shock and get killed a carbon dioxide extinguisher is the best thing to fight an electrical fire because it doesn't allow oxygen to reach the burning material let's move on to the next paragraph we spend millions of rupees each year in fighting fires and we spend more trying to find new ways of preventing fires from happening and getting out of control on the whole we have learned rather well to control fire and put it to good use in our everyday life long ago there were no firemen when fire broke out everybody became a firefighter people formed human chains they still do if required and passed buckets of water from a well or a pond to the blaze now there are laws about building construction which ensure that space is left between buildings to reduce the fire risk every new building especially a public place must ensure observance of fire prevention norms bands of fire fighting workers with special equipment known as fire brigades are there to put out fires firefighters are highly trained people they possess many skills they cut off electricity supply knock down dangerous walls spray water and other materials to bring fire under control they are also trained in first aid so that they can help people suffering from burns or from the effects of smoke the discovery of fire and its uses helped early men to cope with nature cope means deal with deal with nature better and gradually adopt a settled mode of life fire is still worshiped in many parts of the world fire is indeed a friend but as we know it can be a dangerous enemy once it gets out of control dear children you know we spend millions of rupees each year in fighting fires friends do you know what are some other things you should do to prevent a fire at home and in the school all electrical appliances must be kept far from flammable things like furniture turn off the gas supply of the stove after use then you can add your own ideas long ago there were no firemen when fire broke out everybody became a firefighter the people used to form human chains and pass buckets of water from ponds or wells to the blaze these days there are trained personnel to handle this this trained team of firefighters is called fire brigades they are skilled people they possess many skills they cut off electricity supply knock down dangerous walls spray water and other materials to bring fire under control they are skilled people to handle all kind of fire they have the knowledge of first aid as well and are able to provide immediate help to people suffering from burn injuries or from the effect of the smoke discovery of fire has been a great boon to mankind fire is worshiped as god in many cultures around the globe it is a dear friend if can be used properly but can be turn dangerous if it goes out of control dear children do you know why do we call fire as both useful and dangerous why do we call fire friend and foe hope you have enjoyed the lesson see you in the next class read the lesson well and try to understand yourself thank you